Okay, can you guys hear me well? Okay, so thanks for being here. My name is uh, Paulo Renato, and uh, I am a technical marketing architect for Intercloud Fabric. And uh, the reason we are here today is uh, to talk about uh, what are the APIs available uh, for Intercloud Fabric in the service provider side. So feel free to ask questions. Let's make this 30-minute uh, session uh, session interactive. So uh, before going to the APIs that we have available on the service provider, I'm going also to give you just like a baseline knowledge on what is Intercloud Fabric. So we double-click them in some of the subcomponents of uh, the solution. And then we uh, talk about uh, the APIs, and uh, we have some remarks by the end. Okay. So here is a typical scenario where we have the private cloud on the left-hand side or a virtualized data center and a provider cloud on the right-hand side. For uh, the customer or the service provider side, uh, we do have an appliance that we call Intercloud Fabric Provider Platform or simply ICFPP. And we're going to concentrate our conversation today on some of APIs that we have at this side. And uh, the whole idea of this virtual appliance or API gateway is to talk with the cloud platform here on the service provider. And when I say cloud platform, it can be, for example, OpenStack, CloudStack, vCloud, or something else that the service provider developed by, by themselves. From the complete picture perspective of the Intercloud Fabric solution, we also have a footprint on the virtualized data center of the enterprise customers, where they have a component that provides end user and IT admin portal. And from there, they can extend, securely extend their network all the way to the service provider, also configure services, etc. right? The whole point of uh, this virtual appliance is all the API calls that we need to do from business customers to the service provider, we send API call to this appliance here. And this is purely for providers like uh, Cisco powered providers with uh, those different cloud platforms. For Azure and AWS, we consume their native uh, APIs, EC2 and Azure APIs, if you will. Okay, so this is the basics of uh, intercloud fabric architecture. So the appliance that I just talked about, ICFPP, is installed and managed by the service provider. It's a multi-tenant device that the service provider will install. And you can install using our multi-tier topology where you can take advantage, for example, of all those different nodes. We do have, for example, uh, the front end of ICFPP from where we can send customers uh, to do the API calls. And that we do have the database node as well. The whole idea of this uh, setup is for us to have a scalability and a high availability as well. And in front of those front end, uh, let's say, appliances, we actually let the service provider choose what is the load balancer that they want to have in front of it. Okay, so now you understand the basics of the architecture and how we can deploy this virtual appliance. Okay, so let's double click. Let's double click on the virtual appliance that I'm talking about, ICFPP. So, ICFPP has, for example, the northbound APIs, and from northbound API perspective, we have basically what we call cloud API and provider API. Cloud APIs provide all the APIs that are consumed by business customers on the left-hand side that have intercloud fabric for business. And I will give you more detail on this. Provider API, and uh, we're going to double click there uh, later on, are the APIs that we give to our customers so they can integrate within the service provider with uh, OSS, BSS systems. In the middle here of this virtual appliance, we have the translation logic. So all the API calls that are sent to the northbound interface, they are translated to the southbound cloud adapter. And in terms of a southbound cloud adapter, we have adapters for different platforms. 
We have one adapter for vCloud Director, so and, uh, service provider customers with a VCD, so they can integrate with us with InterCloud Fabric. We have another, another adapter for OpenStack as well. So we do have customers today using OpenStack in their uh, cloud platform, and uh, we are able to integrate with them by using this adapter. And then we have CloudStack as well. We have uh, some customers with uh, this platform, and this is how we integrate with them, and we do have custom adapter. Custom adapter is the following. We give the customer our SDK. It's Java-based SDK. And if the customer has some cloud platform that they develop by themselves, are not one of those out of the box, following our documentation, they can develop the integration by themselves. And Cisco gives them all the support so they can develop this integration. Okay, so now you have an idea on how ICFPP architecture looks like. So let's double click in some of those APIs. From cloud API perspective, which are the APIs consumed by the business customers, we have classes of APIs here, like uh, general APIs from where customers actually do the authentication with ACFPP. So we send them the API key so they can continue to, for example, manage an image in the sense that they can export from the business customer or the enterprise all the way to the service provider, the template. Also perform VM lifecycle operations, create new VMs, reload a VM, terminate a VM, and VM storage management as a security. For security specifically, there are some customers they support security group based on instance or based on uh, the VPC level. So, and uh, this API actually is optional, but uh, it really depends on what the service provider supports. And uh, just uh, to clarify here, those APIs come all the way to ICFPP. The translation logic will send the API call all the way to the adapter that was provisioned by the service provider, and then we interact with uh, the cloud platform of the service provider. Okay, so those are some of the APIs. So hopefully you guys in the back can see this, but this is like a basic flow on how we can take advantage of uh, the, some of the APIs, cloud APIs, to provision, for example, or to actually move a template to the service provider. So the takeaway here, we don't need to look uh, all those details, all those flows, but the takeaway here is InterCloud Fabric for Business will send an API call to ICFPP and we transfer the image to ICFPP. After the image is transferred, for example, the ICFPP using the cloud adapter will talk with the cloud platform and po post the image within the cloud platform. And then uh, when it is finished, we send an answer back to the business customers so they know that they have the image posted in the service provider. Okay? So those are some of the APIs and just like an, an example of a flow. So is there any questions so far on what was explained? Okay, so let me talk now about uh, provider APIs. And uh, those are the APIs that we see that provider customers, cloud providers, for example, we use the most, okay? And let me explain why. So from an architecture perspective, I'm talking now about those APIs here. And those APIs are classified in the same, uh, in those, let's say, capabilities. Cloud instance provisioning. So besides using the GUI, customers can use our APIs in order to make the configuration of InterCloud Fabric Provider Platform to talk with, uh, for example, CloudStack, OpenStack, or vCloud Director, or even the custom adapter. Besides the cloud instance provisioning, we also have the tenant and user provisioning. Let me give you one example on how our customers are using this. So think about the portal that you have from where customers order a new, for example, set of resources, from where they can deploy uh, new VMs or consume other services that you have. You don't want for all those customers that order services from you to manually go to the GUI and provision those tenants. 
So what we do is we expose this API, and from the portal of the service provider, they can call this API and provision this tenant. Okay? Accounting any statistics as well. So service providers, most of them, they have capabilities in order, for example, to do metering of all the workloads or resources that are used in the cloud provider. What we also do as part of this appliance, we keep track of uh, all the VMs that were provisioned by InterCloud Fabric. So the providers can use their existing metering system or also consume our APIs in order to get the information that they want. And some of the customers, they can cross the information and make sure, okay, this was provisioned by InterCloud Fabric, this was provisioned directly on my portal. Okay, and I'm going to show you uh, like a demo uh, on how we can use this API. The other one is logs and debugging, right? So if you want to expose from InterCloud Fabric perspective, logs, syslogs, for example, to some tool that you might have within your cloud environment or cloud platform, you can use our APIs and keep track of uh, the health of the appliance and everything that we deployed. And finally here, uh, we have the infrastructure update, meaning you can use our APIs in order to update the whole infrastructure as well related to InterCloud Fabric, okay? So talking specifically about some of the APIs, the ones that I mentioned, they are more uh, prevalent or we believe that the customers will use. Those are some examples. Here we have the method, for example, post, where you can provision a new tenant and this is the output that we receive. We also can delete a new tenant or a tenant that was created before using this method or also update a tenant information. So this is here only for your reference, right? So I encourage you to get the presentation we are going to share later so we can uh, see uh, with some detail uh, what are our capabilities in terms of APIs. Another uh, API that we see customers using is getting information about the tenants. What are the tenants that I have today within the service provider? And uh, give me information about uh, or detailed information about the tenants that I have, right? So uh, for you to have more idea on what I'm talking about, so let me do like a quick demo on the APIs that we have. Okay, so I'm just using Postman here. You can use uh, the REST client of your choice. The whole idea here is I'm doing a post uh, with uh, the login and I have like my login information here. So the whole idea of this call is I'm going to get the API key, okay? And uh, this information is on the table that I showed before, how we get the login or, or the REST key. So here we can see that I got a REST key information and uh, we support the output in JSON or XML as, as well. So it is, uh, you decide what is the format that you want to receive the information. So after I get the key, what I want to do is, I will paste the key information on the header and I'm going to get Tenants, what are the tenants that I have today running my platform? Or they were provisioned by InterCloud Fabric? So this is the format that uh, we received the information and uh, then you can parse the information. And uh, what I'm looking for here is the tenant ID. Okay, this one that starts with a CD. Because with uh, this information of the tenant ID, I can perform uh, the next call. So for the next call, I will update also the header uh, with uh, the API key. And here we have, for example, the tenant ID. Okay, so we do have documentation on how our API is structured. 
in the sense of uh, what are the URIs that you should use and also what are the operations that you can perform. It's fairly easy for you to understand uh, what are the operations that we have. So I personally find this API very interesting. So here I'm showing you an API call for a live environment where I'm listing for one specific tenant all the VMs that were provisioned in the cloud provider. And one of the things that we do with this API is you can see here, for example, what is the type of the VM? Here I have one that I call Infra ICS, another one that I call Service VSG, another one Service CSR, another one called Application. So InterCloud Fabric itself has an infrastructure that allows the network extension, for example. And the, what I'm showing you here is by using our APIs, you can differentiate for for example, between all those infrastructure VMs that are part of the, let's say, architecture of InterCloud Fabric, from all the VMs that run real application. Some providers, they use this information to charge customers differently, based, okay, this is part of uh, the infrastructure, I don't want to charge a customer based on this, but I want to charge for all the application VMs that they deploy. So. Another information that you can extract from here, let me get a VM that is up and running. This VM, for example, is running for 140 hours. And if I scroll here to the right, I can see, for example, what is the name of the VM running the cloud provider? And what is the resource that it consumes in terms of a CPU and memory. So essentially, you can expose this information to your OSS BSS system. And the other thing is, it doesn't replace whatever you might have today. And this is optional, right? Some customers, they like it. Some customers, they don't need to use it. And some of them, they even cross-reference the information. OK? So um, just to showcase how live this information is, I will log into uh, the portal from where I'm extracting of the cloud provider, from where I'm extracting this information. Okay. So in that case here is a cloud provider uh, with um, OpenStack. And if I come back here, the VM that I'm showing right now, it is named ICF Web Rob 1. So if I come back here to my cloud provider, and uh, this is the Horizon portal from OpenStack. And if I show here, ICF Web Rob 1. So this is the instance. And it is active for five days, 20 hours. And here we have the configuration. One vCPU with uh, two gigabytes of memory. Exactly what the uh, API is showing here. One vCPU and uh, two gigabytes of memory. OK? so. This is uh, one of the APIs that you as a service provider uh, can consume. OK, so is there any questions so far? OK, so let me continue here. Apologize for that, so let me just uh, OK. So this was just like a, a demonstration. Yes, go on. Sure. OK. It is the OSS BSS level. Yes. 
I exactly, yes. Uh, what we are tracking here is essentially what was deployed through Intercloud Fabric. Okay, if you have, uh, by any chance, another platform in your data center, and you want to correlate this information, you need to do it at the OSSBSS level. Okay? Okay, so, uh, so far you saw briefly the architecture. You saw some of the APIs that we have. You saw like how we can use some of those APIs. And let me finish here uh, with uh, the self-bound cloud adapter, okay? So essentially, customers that have some of those cloud platforms that I mentioned, uh, or actually they don't have, right? In either cloud stack, open stack, or vCloud director, they can use this model here. So we provide the SDK to the cloud provider developer. So they develop the code, upload to ICFPP, the appliance that I'm talking about. After uploading, they can configure, for example, the cloud platform. The configuration of the cloud platform is essentially within ICFPP, informing the URI or the URL from where you can send the API calls from ICFPP to the cloud platform. Very basic. And here we have the tenant provisioning uh, where you can use our APIs. And then you saw some of the APIs that we have for tenant provisioning. And after tenant provisioning, customers can start using this custom cloud platform. It is very straightforward. And here we have, for example, some of the material that we provide alongside with the SDK. Okay, all the guides uh, for development. We also give the customer an OVA file with uh, this appliance that I just mentioned. And finally here we do also, or we give to the customers, the intercloud fabric for business bundle from where they can test end to end the solution that we have. And even before they get here, we also have like a test harness where we give the customers like a cup of a Python scripts so they can test some of the APIs just the way I showed you guys. Okay, and finally here are some uh, uh, takeaways or key takeaways from what we presented. So the idea of uh, ICFPP itself is very simple. It's simply an API gateway. And all the API calls we send to the cloud platform of the customer. And ICFPP also creates API uniformity. Uh, so people ask me, why don't we consume the APIs or the native APIs from the cloud provider? If you think about the ecosystem that we want to support, Right, cloud stack, open stack, vCloud director, each one of them, they have different APIs. If you try to resolve this on the business customer, for example, imagine how many adapters that we need to develop to be on the business side. And every time that you update something or you get a new API, you will need to upgrade all the enterprise customers. So we decided to uh, put this logic on the service provider end, okay? Yeah, so uh, this is pretty much uh, what I wanted to present. So here you have a list of all the presentations related to Intercloud Fabric. So I encourage you to get this presentation and later on you can download all those specific uh, slides, if you will, because some of them happened already, okay? So is there any question? Okay, so I think that's all. Thank you guys, thank you.